The phrase colourful identity could have been invented for Roger Rogerson, but now the 73-year-old former detective is under arrest, charged over the shocking murder of a young student. He's the most notorious disgraced detective in Australian history. There was a Lanfranchi shooting, or the shooting of Warren Lanfranchi in the laneway. I think there's two sides to Roger. The friendly avuncular side, and there's this other side. I think he's someone you wouldn't want to mess with, Roger. Australia's most notorious crooked cop accused of being involved in a murder. Mr Rogerson, do you maintain your innocence? We're back to the Casabo days now. Today, Roger Rogerson has been charged with the murder of Jamie Gow in what police claim is a drug deal gone wrong. I'm very surprised about it for, for a number of reasons. On the other hand, there's a sense in which I'm not surprised. Can you believe, though, that he, he's possibly caught up in this crime? It's hard to believe, I, I must admit, because he's always been rather clever, Roger. Rogerson, tough and charismatic, was once lauded as a hero cop even touted as a future police commissioner. But all of that changed in June 1981. In a secluded laneway called Danga Place, Rogerson shot dead drug dealer Warren Lanfranchi, recreated in the television series Blue Murder. And when he got there, he shot him twice, once in the head, once in the chest. He's gone backwards and he's reaching down the front of his pants and suddenly he comes out with a revolver. I said, this bloke's gonna shoot me. I knew he was going to pull the trigger, so I've fired twice, and he's fallen over, and he's landed in the gutter. Rogerson has always maintained it was self-defence, taking a current affairs Howard Gibbs back to the scene of the shooting years later. Do you regret that? I don't really regret it. Um, I regret what happened as a result of shooting him, but the actual circumstances of me shooting him, it just had to happen that way. But Roger says he acted in self-defence. Uh, yes, I know he did. Former detective Clive Small says Rogerson's reputation never recovered after the incident. Following the sh uh, shooting of Lanfranchi, uh, things started to turn bad very publicly. The media started focusing on him. There were whispers within the police. They became a bit of a um, loud roar, if you like. Rogerson was never charged over the death of Warren Lanfranchi, but he didn't count on a brave young woman called Sally Ann Huckstep. This is real. This is not something that I have made up in revenge or in anger. This is just cold, bare fact. People started to take account of what she'd said. Um, that being on 60 Minutes, that ruined his reputation. A few years later, he was dismissed from the police force. Author John Dale has just released a revised and updated edition of his book about Sally Ann Huckstep. He says she knew she was risking her life speaking out publicly about police corruption. And in February 1986, she was murdered, her body found in Sydney Centennial Park. She really was the original whistleblower. She was a whistleblower, she was a police whistleblower, perhaps one of the most important whistleblowers in New South Wales. Rogerson was never charged in relation to Sally Ann Huckstep's murder and denied any involvement. John Dale has been one of the few people to speak with Rogerson's first wife, Joy. She said to me his reputation over the last 30 years, he was a very complex man and that he'd lived a double life and that decent people were afraid to say no to him. And even with his own family, she said, he was very manipulative. She was very nervous to talk, I must admit, and she changed her name. Years later, Rogerson was again implicated in a serious crime. This time, the attempted murder of police officer Michael Drury. Did you have a hand in the shooting of Mike Drury? Definitely not. He was charged, but later acquitted of conspiracy to murder Drury. On the advice of my solicitor, I'm saying nothing. Today, as he was arrested, Rogerson was crying victim, as he's done so often in his colourful and questionable career. I've got no doubt that the public believe that I was just a corrupt cop and, and really was just a, a, a no-good bastard. So it's all bull? It's about 90% bull, yes, of course it is. He's made a living out of that reputation as well with his tours with uh, Chopper Reed and others. A clear weapon, Charles, like on one hand, he, he feels that he's been hard done by, but on the other hand, I think he's making the most of his reputation. I just think it's an amazing story and it's a, 
you know, it shows that, that Sydney story since 1981, what is it, uh, 30 years later, is still continuing. You know, the, the consequences of that shooting in Dango Place have just continued to resonate. If he is convicted of these crimes, he'll spend the rest of his life in jail. And they're very serious charges. The likelihood of bail will be limited. And given the serious nature of those charges, by the time they've gone to court and if they were convicted, he'd be getting effectively a life sentence. He'll die in jail. Fascinating, isn't it?